Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update for everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. So yesterday was quite a big day. Um, as you know that we had the bankless bull cast and it was really good. It was really great and um, there was a lot of really good feedback about it. And then um, we had a story about uh, RPL tokens going out to incentives and I gave some shout outs. We had more whale marriage and Maso had a Coinbase person, a senior person from Coinbase following him, which I left it as a nice little positive note there. Um, today we have, um, we're gonna start with this comment by Ken and he said, did you see that we can get a free merge NFT when the merge happens? Which is a really nice little story, right? No, not, that's not the main thing. So when you go to this page, which is the consensus.net slash merge, it does turn out that they're giving away like NFTs for free around the merge, which is really nice. But in Viz, kind of scroll down a little bit and read the page. And then he saw this thing here that said, staking our treasury with CodeFi and Rocket Pool. Now, if you want to see what this is, this is the consensus website right here. And they're giving out this like free NFT, blah, blah, blah. And then you scroll down and it's like talking about sustainability, security, stability, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And you keep scrolling down and scroll down and scroll down. And they've got a little timeline right here of how they think what's going to happen around the merge. So executable beacon chain proposal, formal verification of merge spec, testnet participation, develop client space teku and remote signer web3 signer, help create EIP 1559 engine API, and staking our treasury with CodeFi and Rocket Pool. Now, what? Who is cons who are consensus? What does this mean? So let's have a look. Over here we have consensus Wikipedia page. I'm sorry if you can't read it on my recording. I'll try to read out the key parts to you. This is Joseph Lubin, founded consensus early 2015. Software foundry developed decentralized software and access uh, software services applications that operate on the Ethereum blockchain. Blah blah blah. Um, Joseph Lubin is one of the co-founders. Joe Lubin is one of the co-founders of Ethereum, and he, um, as far as like people think, he is the biggest fish. Um, he's the biggest single holder of Ethereum in in the world. Basically, I think he has somewhere in the order of a few million ETH tokens, um, which is more than Vitalik, more than anyone else. Like he has a lot of ETH. So what what is consensus they're the people who make metamask they're the people who have um who run infura which people use as a light client for a while and um it's the back end of a lot of applications that use it to communicate with the blockchain with the ethereum blockchain um also they worked on um they worked on teku um and it says here besu too so I'm not 100% sure about Besu, but I guess it says it right there. But I know that they worked on Teku. They're the ones who developed Teku too. So now we go from here and then a little bit lower, um, Marceau comes in and he says, hey, guess who's up for some bread? And now bread is what we say in the Rocket Pool community when there's some good news. So basically he says, Giga Bread equals landed. So now Giga Bread was the name that he gave to a certain news story that was kind of confidential for the last few months and it was supposed to be like the news that ends all news so now you're thinking okay there's consensus and they're like this big fish and they're saying that they want to stake with rocket pool right here but what does that mean so there's this article from a few months ago where it says at least a portion of those are blue chip crypto projects like ethereum and filecoin meaning consensus could very well be holding tens of billions of dollars in crypto on its balance sheet and like, like I said, Joseph Lu Joe Lubin himself has potentially millions of ETH. So it seems like consensus after the merge will start staking with Rocket Pool. Now, from the bits of gossip that has been filtering through trading, it looks like it might be that they'll run nodes and maybe at the same time buy our ETH. Um, to kind of balance those out so there was discussions happening around the internet that maybe you know they've already bought the the um, rpl tokens that they need for doing that right so 
Consensus is an 11 digit company. That means they have tens of billions of dollars. If they have tens of billions of dollars and they only stake 10% of their treasury, that means they'll stake $1 billion worth of ETH. That means they need 10% of RPL token to go with that, which is $100 million worth of RPL token. Now, $100 million worth of RPL token is would make them the biggest, the pretty much like having somewhere in the order of 3 million, I think, or 4 million RPL tokens. There's no one like that. That level of purchase would have been noticeable by the community. Like someone would have known that had happened. So it looks like they might not have bought. It looks like they might be buying soon. I don't know how they're going to buy. I don't know what they're going to do. There's a lot of question marks around this at the moment. But no matter which way you spin it, it is very, 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 very bullish. Scarily bullish. I definitely do not own enough RPL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However much I have, it's not enough. <laughs> okay, so that I will let you all like kind of just, just bask in that for a moment because it really is very, very, very big news. I can't overstate that, I don't think. Like, I mean, there's no way in which consensus stakes with Rocket Pool and it not be like monumental so the only way that this you know would not be bullish is if, if for some reason it ends up not happening but the way it looks like right now is big big things that are ahead so moving on from that um we have this comment oh sorry that's the muscle post so we had this comment from daddy who said this is one of the strengths of the rp team not taking the shortcuts like lido Companies in lockstep with Ethereum's core decentralization values will be choosing Rocket Pool. So consensus obviously is one of the you know fundamental um, like uh, companies that are built in line with Ethereum and like you know, building Ethereum software and stuff. Um, it makes sense that they choose Rocket Pool over other services to stake their their um, their ETH. Now, you know you might think why don't they just solo stake? Well. Solo staking is actually less profitable than staking with Rocket Pool. Um, you the gains that you could potentially get from Rocket Pool staking outweigh those that you get from solo staking, and it's one of the reasons why so many solo stakers want to migrate after after um, the withdrawals happen. So it really is amazing, you know, that the team does have these values and the community as a whole has these values and holds them close and it makes it attractive to those who know and they're getting much bigger than consensus. So um, I remember when I met Marcel in person um, a couple of months ago and um, we kind of like asked him about Gigabread and he said that like it's big, right? And it looks like, you know, a big institution was going to stake with uh, Rocket Pool and um, there were some issues about it because we were kind of like entering a bear market. Um, and my guess at the time was it was going to be Gemini like they were going to build their um, kind of like Ken was talking about in the bull cast yesterday about how Rocket Pool will kind of provide like a white label service where each company can like just slap their own name on it and kind of like take profits off the top. And I thought it was going to be Gemini doing that where they'd stake ETH on behalf of their um, customers and then take that percentage on top and like keep the RPL rewards for themselves. But consensus is way bigger than. As far as I know, consensus is bigger than um, Gemini. So it's really amazing. It's really, really good news. <clears throat> Let's have a look over here. So now we're going back a step. So right after I, actually while I was recording um, Rocket Fuel yesterday, David Hoffman, you know, who's the host of Bankless, one of the hosts of Bankless, came into trading and kind of like poked poked um, a stick at some of the comments that um, Ken and Marceau made during the bullcast. The first one that he started was with this idea of 50% of ETH staking will be too high. And he thinks, you know, 50% uh, has his, like, his, his multi-decade um, projection, not like within the next two years. So um, what happened is it led to a pretty interesting discussion about just how much ETH will get staked and how long it will take for that much ETH to get staked and what kind of percentage market share RPL will have, or the Rocket Pool will have for that and um, how it's going to kind of work out. And then the conversation kind of like, he stayed for around for a while and like really made a lot of points. 
And then another thing that came up was this idea of Rocket Pool being non rent seeking. So for those who don't know, rent seeking means that the protocol skims money off the top of the earnings and kind of keeps a little bit of chunk for themselves and then gives the rest out to their customers. And then are there, you know, there are people who participate with the protocol or whatever. And then um, that led to another really good discussion about how it works to um, take rent in terms of for Rocket Pool because the team obviously don't get any money from the node operators, they don't get any money from our ETH holders. What they do get some money from is being ODAO members, but that's a service that they provide that they get paid for, just like David himself is part of that service. Uh, Bankless are an ODAO member and they get paid for that. So um, he said, Ken had such a great answer to RPL existing as a means to allow us not to rent seek. And then David says, um, I also have a problem with this answer. The Rocket Pool team doesn't take a cut, yes, but that's just because it's rerouted into the value of RPL. So there was like a lot of semantic arguments, but for those couple of points, there were really, it was some really good discussions. And I think it's really worth going back if you haven't read that. There was a lot going on in trading at that time yesterday. So it was easy to get get lost, but um, it's definitely worth it your time to go back in there and have a look because there were some really good comments and people made some really good points. Um, next, we have this comment here from Takezo, um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, that said, Ken and Maso, I'd like to read this out to you because it kind of like really um, shared the sentiment of a lot of the um, people in the Rocket Pool community. I said, obviously I'm way behind, but you all did a great job on the bull cast. Even as someone who's already familiar with the Rocket Pool concepts, I enjoyed having an informed, consolidated refresher on everything. I think you represented the pro product, protocol, and the community extremely well. I tried listening to you as a skeptical outsider and you were both very polished, professional, and matter of fact in your deliveries. I've been around here a long time and I kept having to remind myself, damn, these guys even aren't even part of the dev team, lol. And I think that speaks volumes to this community and what this technology has going for it. Cheers, guys. And the reason why I pointed this comment out specifically, and there were a lot of comments that were kind of in this line, was because it really reflects my sentiments as well, just about how impressed I was with Ken and Marceau's, um, perf like performance, I guess, during the during the conversation, during the interview. And it's just, it was really great to see that, you know? And um, I think uh, they really did a huge service to the community as a whole. So moving on from that now, we got this bit of news yesterday from Joe and he says, Hey guys, I don't want to interrupt, interrupt too much, but Autodesk just approved my startup license. So now I can leave, legally sell the Proteus as a whole unit. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the Proteus is Joe's um, hardware solution to staking. It's basically a low watt um, home staking unit that has hardware, RAM, everything built into it, all configured, ready for you to plug in and like get the software and, and start staking pretty much like very, very quickly. Um, it'll be cheaper than Nooks and it'll be like a lot more efficient than Raspberry Pis and stuff. Like Joe's really spent a lot of time working on this and um, it's going to be really great. So he's got the green light to go ahead with that now. And then <clears throat> he's already... He's already like starting to push that now. So he's saying, hey, Mika, are you awake? And yes, sir. And then he asked him to like help him give suggestions with some themes of a website. And Joe's saying that he's going to start making the website for pre-orders this week. And then um, they had a discussion in the community about like what kind of profit margin he's going to find for himself. But it's just really great that Joe's like making this, um, really developing this because it's going to make staking from home a lot more accessible for a lot of people who are who want to take part in it but like maybe find a nook too expensive and they don't want to be a centralizing um person with like all nodes or some other staking service so that was really wonderful to see as well i'm really happy for joe that this effort that he's put in for so many months is like starting to like really come to its peak now so that's really wonderful to see and then finally i'm going to finish with this comment uh from jasper who says Bullcast has inspired me to finish my R ETH will flip ST ETH essay. So Jasper's written a few articles before, kind of like lauding um, the Rocky Pool protocol and like really helped um, develop some um, interesting uh, ideas. So this, he shared a quick paragraph from it and you'll, you'll have to read the whole article obviously to see the whole thing. But I'll read it out to you guys. It says, if the market saw ST ETH as a risk-free wrapper on future ETH, the spread would quickly be eaten up. 
as it has instead only slowly climbed up and plateaued around the 3 to 4% DPEG, the market clearly has concerns about Lido. It is important not to undersell how big this DPEG is. If a user bought STETH shortly before the capitulation event, they very quickly found themselves nearly down two years worth of yield, gone, vanished in days. In other words, because at, at one point the DPEG was like 8%. In other words, if a user had staked with Lido at the launch of the Beacon Chain and panic sold during the DPEG, they would have lost all the rewards they had ever earned. The rate of growth in ETH staking is slower than other avenues in DeFi, and as such, the losses are much more um, are more painful, as they are much harder to earn back. In such a capital-intensive, low-yield environment, having a proper risk assessment is crucial. Fortunately, the market has more or less ordered all the LSD tokens by perceived risk during their degree of DPEG and we can use this to draw some conclusions about LSD token risk. So LSD token risk is um, a real thing and um, like the image I shared from us a couple of weeks ago about the, you know, the scale of decentralization, um, right now there is a DPEG of our ETH of about 1%, Lido of around 3 to 4% and Coinbase is CB ETH is around 7% to 8% DPEG. So that really does show you that uh, our ETH is one of the strongest um, strongest tokens of those LSD tokens. And um, I'm sure Jasper's gonna explain that a lot more in the article when it finally comes out. But it's really, um, really great to uh, have someone like Jasper putting those ideas out there because so many people listen to him. So I think um, that's something to look forward to. And on that note, I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. And I'm not going to try to butcher the bankless outro today like I did yesterday. But um, have all of you have a great weekend and I'll pop back tomorrow to let you know what's going on. Bye.